Hi. Hi. Okay. Hi, guys. <laughs> First of all, uh, bueno, good afternoon. Thank you for coming to our talk. And in the next few minutes, we will talk about how uh, establish cover channel uh, abusing or using AT commands in DSM networks. Okay. Well, a uh, short and brief presentation <laughs> about us. I am uh, Alfonso Muñoz, uh, Minecraft on, on Twitter. I am the head of cybersecurity lab in a well in an important cybersecurity company in, in Spain. And what well, my my skills are focused mainly on offensive and defensive security. And well, here you have uh, more information about me. And here with me, my friend Jorge Cuadrado. Uh, Token727, uh, is, is one uh, on, on Twitter, and well, he's a, a very good cybersecurity researcher, and he's focused on cloud uh, security and, and pen testing, okay? Well, here you have more information about us, and if you want to contact us, okay, here, here is the info. Well, uh, this talk is a little bit <laughs> strange, so uh, we need to, well, here are some, some previous concepts, okay? Uh, all our tests uh, were realized uh, for academic uh, research, and up to our knowledge, no real system has been damaged, okay? Up to our knowledge. Maybe yes, but uh, we don't know, okay? Um, well, um, well this, this, this is enough for now, okay? We continue. Well. After, uh, before explaining our results, uh, we would like to introduce a, um, a, a couple of previous concepts, okay? Because we focus on ways to uh, exchange information using cover channel, okay? And in the base case, uh, without pain, right? that, that point is important. For that, uh, we want to study uh, the freaking history. For us, it's interesting because maybe it's a, a good starting point, okay? Sorry for that, but I need to some definition, okay? And I read, but quickly. <laughs> freaking is a slang term coined to describe the activity of a culture of people who study, experiment with, or explore telecommunication system, such as equipment and system connected to public telephone networks, okay? Maybe you know. The term freak is a sensational spelling of the word freak with a pH from phone and maybe also refer to, a, to the use of a audio frequency to manipulate a phone system. Freak, freakers, and phone freak are names used for and by individuals who participate in freak. Okay? Well, uh, the freaking history is, is amazing and as attribute, we have printed. Um, some whistles we have here, for example, with our 3D printer. We have a small works, if you want, okay? And we have a big one, okay? It's, it's true that, well, obviously it doesn't work, but it's, it's funny. It's, well, it's a stone, but, well. In the slide, you have more information about this, this topic if you want to, well, to advance. And well, they are a good reference and a good link. Okay, what is the beginning of our uh, research? Well, uh, with all previous information, we our effort is to to understand better how uh, the mobile phone work at a low level. Okay, from a computer security point of, of view. In fact, uh, there are some proposal and new attacks that is interesting to, to know. Maybe, as you know, uh, there are some attacks that are difficult to avoid from our mobile phone. There are some, some good examples. For example, well, SS7 attacks and attacks to the managed uh, radio communication, okay? Some quick uh, reminders. Uh, about SS7 attacks. SS7 is a set of protocols allowing phone networks to exchange the information needed for passing calls and text message between each other and blah, blah, blah. Okay? What is the problem? Uh, once they, they have access to the SS7 system, a hacker can easily have access to the same amount of information and snooping capabilities 
a security service, okay? This is a very uh, famous and very big problem, vale? Okay, another kind of attacks is about the software that manages radio communication, and as you know, every mobile phone runs to operating system, the one you interact with, like Android or iOS, and the one that controls the radio hardware that, uh, you know, the second OS is uh, so insecure, okay? So, uh, at this point, uh, we think that it's a good idea to build uh, our own mobile phone, okay? to have uh, more control about what is transmitted and how it's transmitted, and maybe uh, we can, after, uh, create maybe cover channels, and maybe to send information, and maybe <laughs> uh, without pain, okay? So now Koke talk more about that because it's the basic for our results, okay? For the later. Oh, oh sorry, <laughs> okay. Uh, well, obviously, uh, the, a good idea is to, to study what other researchers, obviously, have uh, previously done in this direction, okay? Koke talk more about that, but this is a, a good example of, of this idea, this transcriptophone that maybe you know. Okay. Mm, well, where are we going to talk about uh, mobile construction now? Uh, as Alfonso said, uh, this was the origin of our research. Um, we were talking about privacy, secraphony, well, this cool stuff. And we ended talking about what's the control we have in the data in our smart devices, in our smartphone, in our telephone. What's happening inside? What's, what are the services that our device is running? Um, at the end of the talk, we were not so sure. You know, it's like, what's happening? It's like so obscure. It's not easy to know what's happening there. So we decided to build our own phone. We decided to discover what are the main parts, how they interact with the GSM network. Uh, you know, if you want to research something, you have to, to start from the base. Um, in this case, we decide also to define some objectives, okay? Uh, we decide to make an easy, easy to, re, to recreate device. Uh, we decide to make it, and also with the objective that other people could build the same device. And with another objective, we decide that these devices were also usable in the real world. Uh, we don't want something, some device that it's only academic. We, we want something that could call, that it's um, easy to use, you know. And also we define another objective. Uh, we decide to make it recycling. Um, recycling for us was like a way to um, make the building process more simple and also to decrease the budget of the project. Uh, in our case, um, if you look at this, at the left uh, image, uh, you can see we recycle some headset we have in our home. Uh, we recy recycle also a power bank. Um, well, it was also not only easier to make, also it um, fixed some problems that other open hardware project has with the battery in concrete. Um, well, also you can see uh, our first um, our first uh, beta um, project. Um, this mobile is uh, even um, is little than a normal smartphone, but well, that's not true because um, this device doesn't have any battery and you have to plug into the electra electrical network. So, well, um, but we discover only with this device that it's possible, you can make your own phone. So. It was the start of all. After that, we decided to improve our phone. Uh, this is the second version. You can see in the videos uh, how is the interface. Sorry, it's in Spanish. <laughs> <laughs> and you can see a simple menu. You can see the input of the pin number. You can see there that it's a Debian cell, the thing you are looking. And also, you can compare the, um, the size of the device with my smartphone. You can see that it's more or less similar uh, size. Well, um, 
happy news. <laughs> uh, we are release all the knowledge we have gathered about this project. Uh, all is free in the in GitHub. In this uh, link, you can you can see the um, the wiki of the project, which is where all the knowledge we have is recorded. Uh, well, it's half translated to English. Uh, it's half half. Uh, I will translate it in when I have time, but shortly it will be all translated. <laughs> <laughs> and well, you can see there also a picture of the um, of the scheme of construction. It's so simple. Uh, as I said, we wanted to make it as simple as possible. And also, you can see the a case we built for our, our 3D printer. It's an, a simple one. But, well, it was um, easier than we expected to make. So if you want to, to try it, I recommend you. There is some simple programs to make this kind of projects, and it's so great. And, um, well, we will continue with the, okay. now with the investigation. <laughs> okay, with this previous uh, information and, and knowledge, uh, we talk about our research, okay? We want to create uh, cover channels is the, the idea, and we uh, want to use 80 commands, okay? 80 commands, and in some way to send information in a GSM network. If it's possible without paying, better. If not, well, but the idea is, is that, okay? So a quick, a quick definition, uh, we try to use cover channel, okay? As you know, a cover channel is a type of computer security attack that creates a capability to transfer information object between processes that are not supposed to be alone to communicate by the computer security policy, okay? We don't have uh, time to, to go deeper in, in these principles or ideas uh, about steganography or cover channel, but all our project or our research is about how to create different ways of cover channel, okay? Well, here is the more important slide <laughs> in the talk, okay? What is our research? Okay, we focus on the uh, client side. Sorry, sorry, here. And here, for example, is the emitter, and here is the receiver, okay? We will make chains to the uh, client antennas or mobile phone, for example, here or here, uh, using 80 commands. Is the idea? Is the idea? We use the antenna that we already use in our hand, uh, handmade mobile phone. Okay, so all the knowledge uh, is useful uh, here. Okay, with this information, the idea is to see if it's possible with this kind of 80 commands that you apply here in these antennas, it is possible to, to send in some way some chains through the GSM network that allows to send information to a destination antenna, okay? So uh, you chain here using 80 commands and in some way the network send information to the uh, destination antenna, okay? Is the idea. And uh, in, in the back, in some way, uh, the, the network telecommunication create a cover channel, okay? All our experiments don't exploit any failure about the um, telecommunication companies. We use uh, standard protocols, and we think that uh, these kind of attacks are generic for any provider, okay? In fact, we only focus here on the uh, interface, no? Network interface. Okay, more details about the specific components in, in our research. Okay, as Alfonso said, we are only focusing on the interface of the GSM network. So, what's an interface for us? Um, an interface has two components, two main, two main components, okay? We have the GSM module, and we have the SIM card of the module. So, I'm going to start with the GSM module, and later I will explain about the SIM card. Um, this is our, our module. This is a SIMCOM, a SIM900, and it's a so um, usual one, not so difficult to, to get. And why? Why have, you, why have we choose this module for our project? Um, well, this module can work in these bands of frequency you can see there, uh, 850, 900, 1800, 1900. 
So these modules should work in more or less um, all, all the world. Um, okay, and what we have to do to interact with this module? Uh, this module works using 80 commands that are so regular commands. It's using in many of the devices, and it's not something so strange. In this case, this module is using the 7.07 and the 7.05 and a proprietary standard of SimCom. Uh, well, what can we do with these commands? Um, we can uh, send SMS. We can send MMS. Uh, we can use the GPRS. And, of course, we can send voice and audio. And, and, and also, we can interact with the with internet. So, as you can see, this module is so flexible. We can make so many kinds of different projects. But also, it's also um, a some forgotten characteristic in this kind of devices is also the temperature range that they can work. In this case, it's minus 40 degrees to plus 85 degrees. So also, if this module was flexible, now you can use it not only inside. You can use it in every part of the world, independent of the temperature, and you can, I don't know, use it in the mountain if you want. And, um, well, also so important part is the price. <laughs> uh, this module is 21 euros, and you can get it in any online store. You will get it maybe for in one week. So I think that's also important. And um, here, the, the other part of, the, of our interface is the SIM card. Okay, if you want to call using the GSM network, you need a SIM card. Uh, we are making calls, so we are using SIM cards. And there is a, there is a fact. If you are going uh, to make a cover channel, you are interested in made it anonymously. You want to be anonymous. So if you want to call anonymously, you need also an anonymous SIM card. Uh, now in Europe, it's not legal, but it's a pity, but it's also possible to get this kind of cards nowadays. Uh, for example, in the picture, you can see uh, some anonymous SIM cards of London. Well, um, why are we focusing in the, um, in the interface of the GSM network? Well, um, traditionally, companies and systems trust their security in the fact that the user can interact with the hardware. Uh, Many years ago, maybe get a BTS hardware or a GSM client was so expensive, so difficult, it was not easy to manage to get one. But we are seeing in, the, in these years that it's cheaper and cheaper and easier and easier to get this kind of modules. So this kind of security by obscurities now mm, not as trustable as it was. So that's the reason because we have started this investigation about the GSM interface, but it should work not only in the GSM interface. We think many systems trust in this kind of assertion that users can't interact with the hardware of the, of the system. Mm, how, mm, how have we managed to, mm, to start our research? How have we made it? Well, um, there is in the corner a tweet, a screenshot of a tweet, that we think it summarizes well how we managed to do it. We have get the manual, and we have, we have go command by command, looking if it does the thing it's, it must do, and also if it doesn't the things it shouldn't. Here you have the first page of the documentation of our module. Uh, well, the, the main part I can say is like, it's so great if you can't sleep. It was like <laughs> so many great naps after reading this. <laughs> so here you can see the boring part of an investigation, but it's needed. It's like, you can, you can see notes, 
notes above notes, not below notes. If you don't, if you don't like only one color because it's ugly, you can use <laughs> various colors. It's okay, but at the end you get this. It's only one slide, but <laughs> <laughs> this is the um, the result of all our investigation. And in the um, the commands, uh, the first command you can see is the ones we are using in our demo. And the, the below commands, it's ones that we haven't used, but are also useful for another project, okay? So I will start with the ones we have used. Uh, first, we have the ATD and ATI, ATH command, which is the call command and the hangout, hang up command. Uh, we have the AT plus CLIP, uh, which will show the metadata of a call. We have also the AT plus CLIR, uh, which will um, show our metadata when we are calling or will hide it. It's a normal hidden call. And also we have the AT plus MO ring, uh, which will say us when our call has arrived to the destination. So as you can see, only with these four commands, we can create a simple data flow. We can start the data flow, we can stop it. We can use the AT plus CLIR to send the data we want, and also we can be sure that the data has arrived to the destination, only with these four commands. And well, after I will explain later a bit more about these commands, how we have used it, but I will, I will mention also these and other commands that we haven't used because they are so interesting. Uh, the first one is to enable the error report. In our case, our errors wasn't so, um, so useful, but in another company, proprietary standards, there are another errors that can be so useful. Uh, also, in the second one for me is the most fun um, command. Uh, with the AT plus BTS, you can create sounds using code. You can, uh, in this case, we haven't used it because you have to establish a call. In our case, we are not establishing a call, we are only dialing. But if you want to establish a call, you can use it and you can send a huge, a huge amount of data. Uh, also, um, there is the third one, which will also deal with um, proprietary standard metadata. And also the fourth one uh, is so interesting because, well, we, we haven't used it, but we should. <laughs> and the, with this command, you can receive, well, you can see the metadata of more than one call at the same time. So this is great also. And well, there is another two ones that are also really interesting. In, you can see the slides after the talk. But if you have any, any question about that later, I can explain a bit more about that. Um, okay. Well, here is also another page of our manual. Um, this is, for example, you can see the ATD command, which is the command we use for a call, for a start a call. And you can see also the metadata, uh, well, the errors that this command um, is sending to us. Uh, we have, in the first versions of our software, uh, we used this metadata. Uh, you can see it's four values, and you can, in every call, you can send two bits. But the problem with this command is like, we, we were like um, cutting calls in a special ways uh, to generate these commands. But the problem is, in some of them, you have to disconnect from the network and it slows down all the process. So yeah, you can send uh, a real message with this, but it will be so slow, so we decided to don't use it. Also, we have also the um, AT plus CLIP. Uh, with this command, uh, you can send uh, metadata, uh, you can see the metadata of a call. So we can manage to make the calls in a special way to change that metadata. Which kind of metadata we can send with this, with this command? Uh, you can send, okay, your mobile ID, your mobile number, the station you are connected to, um, and also if you are in an internal um, phone network, you can send also the internal ID. So 
this is the main command we are using to transmit information because it's clear that it's useful. And also, we have the AT plus CLIR, which is like, okay, I will show you your metadata if I activate that, or I will not show you. It's on one or zero. It's so easy. It's a so clear way to transmit also information. And well, here is the the first demo. <laughs> okay, uh, here is the an, an example of of first uh, demo. Okay, here we we can see uh, one of the possible cover channels that we we can uh, create. Okay. On the right, you can see our environment, more or less, to, to do this, okay? You have two antennas, two Arduinos, and obviously two uh, SIM cards, okay? So, uh, at the end, uh, we have uh, an emitter and a receiver, okay? And here is a, an example of, of cover channel. For example, uh, using eight, uh, 80 commands here, for example, this number is fake, okay? It's not real. <laughs> Using this uh, this kind of command, we can send, for example, a bit one. Uh, at the end, uh, we use a missed call with a hidden uh, mobile phone number, okay? And we can send bit zeros uh, with this specific command uh, using a missed call with visible mobile phone number, okay? So, with 80 commands, we can manage a protocol, and at the end, uh, we can uh, send information. And if you, if you think, in this example, uh, we send information without paying, because we don't establish uh, any formal communication, okay? Well, video always is better, so... <laughs> So, okay, here, well, we can see the first demo. Well, in this demo, we send 88 bits, okay, of, of information. Now, it's important to listen. Yeah, as you can see, uh, in the left part, we are sending the information and, well, in the right part, we are receiving it. So every seven seconds, more or less, sounds a, a missed call, okay? And, well, it's true that this, uh, this mechanism is very stable, and obviously you can uh, send information without establishing a formal communication, so without pain, okay? Always the, the same idea. And, well, obviously, this mechanism is slow, okay? But, well, it's free, so, well, <laughs> it's fine. As you can see, the receiver is receiving GOT, so we are transmitting Game of Thrones. <laughs> yes, or not. <laughs> <laughs> well, obviously, uh, this video is 17 minutes, I don't remember. Well, okay, obviously, <laughs> what is the, the mouse? Here, okay, go to the end. So, 70 minutes for 88 bits, okay? It's so fast. <laughs> okay. But works. But at the end, obviously, if you go here, you can see a, me a message. Okay. The message is, hi hackers, hi hackers. <laughs> and well, we, we send 88 bits, and in this specific example, uh, we use 88 uh, missed calls, okay? Every missed call, one bit. Perfect? Yes. <laughs> and well, more information about this specific uh, example, okay? Um, we uh, discover um, different ways to create cover channels, okay? All our tests uh, have been restricted to Spain, that, but within that, um, they work in, in other countries, okay, because it's, it's generic. Well, uh, in general, uh, we, we can send more or less uh, 12 bits per minute, okay? So the hidden capacity of our cover channel is 12 bits uh, per minute. A good question is if this 
um, quantity, this amount of information is enough or, or not? Uh, too much, too, too little? Okay, well, it's true that you can send um, uh, information of, of interest with this amount of, of time, okay? For example, in three minutes, you can send an IP address, you can send a, one address, a Tor address, one GPS coordinate, so, well, it's, it's great. For example, uh, one hour, more or less, 700 bits, okay? So, 700 missed call, okay? It's a lot of missed call, okay? Here, for example, you can send crypto, uh, cryptographic password, well, a lot of information, and obviously, if you use this mechanism uh, one day, for example, you send uh, this amount of information that may be, I don't know, a, a picture, image, uh, with good uh, resolution, okay? Well, another good question is um, how uh, stable this kind of cover channels are, okay? Uh, there are some uh, important uh, topics or, or results about that. For example, no SIMs in, in our research has been banned in the last five months, okay? Every day, more or less, uh, we send uh, one hour of information, okay? More or less. 700 missed calls per day, a lot of missed calls always, <laughs> and 700 uh, bits. And this, well, always in our experiment, we use uh, registered prepaid, uh, register prepaid SIM and anonymous prepaid SIM. Uh, prepaid SIM. The longest test was uh, two days without uh, interruption or, or blocking, and we decided to uh, stop it. Uh, the feeling is that uh, network telecommunication companies don't apply any control about that. So, if you can send information, send. Maybe it's a slow, but you can send, okay? Anyway, um, today, well, uh, our, our interest now is to study uh, amplification techniques. How, well, examples to uh, send more information using uh, less, for example, less missed miss call, okay? La, the, the idea is, um, well, go, go faster, no? Is <laughs> the idea, okay? So we study several uh, amplification techniques. In the next slide, we talk more about two examples of amplification techniques. Uh, one is uh, virtual phone numbers uh, mechanisms. Uh, configuration by the internet, but working in a 2G scenario without internet, and uh, the possibility to create cover channel using colority spoofing uh, technique that in this case we combine different uh, mechanism working in a 2G plus internet scenario. Okay, so more detail about this amplification techniques. Uh, well, as Alfonso said, uh, one of the um, characteristics of a cover channel is the capacity. So, uh, when we started to research that, it was like the most the most simple method you can imagine is like, okay, we have one SIM card with one GSM, so why not two? And why not four? And why not eight? If you can send one bit with one, why not eight with eight SIM cards? So. Mm, this method was like so expensive, of course, and also not so easy to configure because at the end you are dealing with so many hardware devices, you have to synchronize them, so. Uh, but well, if you like that idea, you can see in the picture the modem pool, that it's so cool actually to use more than one SIM card at the same time. But the other alternative we, um, we managed to found was the virtual numbers. Uh, well, when I started with, with this research, um, I didn't know what was that, a virtual number, what's that? Um, a virtual number is some kind of number you can, you can pay for, but, it's, uh, but you, are, you don't have it. You can call them and you can configure the mobile number, the virtual number, to make some commands. For example, if someone called this number, redirect the call, forward the call to me, for example. Or you can do the opposite. If I call this number, please forward the call to another device. Uh, 
in the next demo, we are going to implement this. For, we have get 16 virtual numbers, and we, hang, we have configured it to forward all the calls to the receiver of the, of the call. So mm, it's so clear to see that if, for example, I call the first mm, virtual number, the call will be forwarded to the receiver, and the receiver will see the mobile, the virtual phone number, not mine. So when the receiver gets the call, it sees, okay, this is the first one, so it's 0001, because we have uh, 16 numbers. Uh, but that's not all. Um, if we can get another two bits, for example, we can use it for a control flow, uh, if we call di directly to the receiver, we can call it normally, or we can call it uh, hiding or ID, so the receiver will be these two bits. Um, also, another interesting, f interesting fact about this is like, okay, uh, we have a layer between the em emitter and the receiver, so the emitter doesn't know what's the receiver, and at the same time, the receiver doesn't know what's the em emitter if you don't use this control channel. And the important part, uh, what's now the capacity of data? Uh, in this example, you can send uh, 28 bits per minute using seven calls in a minute. So we have uh, more than duplicate the capacity of our cover channel with the, another demo. And here are the, the next demo, okay? Well, in this demo, uh, there, there is music, so enjoy. It's three minutes, okay? Because it's important to see in the reality. <laughs> it's the same, okay? It's send information, but with uh, a few calls, okay? It's the idea. The same, the same environment, but in the cloud, okay? <laughs> there are a lot of uh, virtual numbers. Do the impossible, see the invisible, row, row, fight the power, touch the untouchable, break the unbreakable, row, row, fight the power, power to the dreams, power for the dreams, the missing piece. The protocol is very simple again, so it's not, I don't know. See how easy they all fall down, digging through the court to see the light, let's get out of here, babe, that's the way to survive, y'all talk. I remember it's... Virtual mobile number is one euro, one euro or two euros. I don't know. Not more expensive. It's possible to get free and pay due to the Oros to do that. Well, we, we send this, this message in this case. It's 40, 40 bits. I remember well. As you can see, it's always plain. We are using 16 virtual numbers. We are sending four bits in each call. Ah, well, a real situation, okay? You need to, well, to wait. <laughs> okay, well, go, go. Okay. Here you have the, the result. We send uh, 40 bits and we use only uh, 10 missed calls, okay? So, every missed call, 4 bytes in this specific example. So, uh, with this mechanism, we uh, want to be less noisy, okay? It's well, amplification techniques. And in this example, we send this specific URL, htb18, and this is a, a onion, a Tor address that 
if you want to rent a hacker, okay, this is the, 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 the URL to, to do that. Well, our last uh, demo is uh, about how to use some specific internet service to do this kind of amplification techniques, okay? Uh, here we can use, for example, uh, caller ID spoofing uh, mechanism to create uh, cover channels, is, is the idea. The idea is uh, to use the combination of a fake mobile phone number to create a cover channel, okay? Because it is possible, it's very easy to create fake mobile phone numbers. And with this idea, for example, uh, we can send up to more or less 29 bits per, uh, per missed call, okay? So one missed call, 29 bits. So it's a good uh, amplification technique. Well, our, our specific demo. Um, demo. Well, we, we try to in, in exchange a lot of information only with one missed call, okay? Only one. And for that, we use a missed call, obviously. We use uh, the fake, more well, the fake, caller ID spoofing mechanism. And the idea is the receiver will receive um, a call from a fake mobile phone number. And this fake mobile phone number, in some way, in some way, hide the information, okay? The hidden information is in the fake mobile phone number. So the receiver only need to uh, decode in some way this uh, fake mobile phone number and to get the uh, hidden information, okay? So we can see here this demo, for example. For doing a quick demo, uh, we use a short uh, URL. For example, we choose a, a valid URL, but we put a, a fake parameter, okay? And this pa in this parameter, we configure a lot of information. We, we create, for example, a sort URL, okay? Here, well, here we have the, the URL, and we create two, two scripts. The first one, uh, you put the hidden information, in this case the short URL, and convert to a fake mobile phone number, okay? This is a, a stupid algorithm here, but <laughs> you have a, a fake mobile phone number. And in this script, uh, you can uh, recover the information, okay? You put the fake mobile phone number. Here is the, um, uh, sorry, here. Here is the hidden information, okay, that you send. But, uh, obviously, it's a URL you can connect, and after that, you can recover all information. In this case, well, cryptographic password, Tor address, Bitcoin address, uh, a lot of information, and, and more. So, the, the last point is how the receiver uh, will receive the, the call, okay? So, we can use a lot of service. For example, this is in, in Spanish, llamadasperdidas.com. Uh, you put the fake mobile phone number, okay? This, for example. Put the number uh, of, for example, my, my mobile phone, this, okay? Well, this is a virtual number to, because I don't want to show my real number, okay? But it's this. <laughs> and, and play, and, and that's all. The service phone call to my mobile phone, here is the number, okay? And the receiver only need to get this number, put in this script, and recover the hidden information, okay? So with only one missed call, again, without paying, we can create a cover channel, and in this case, transmitting uh, here 20, 20 byte bits, and uh, here a lot of information more. Okay, well, some conclusions and future work. <laughs> uh, well, to summarize all, uh, we have talked about how we, are, how we have managed to create a covered channel uh, with the most simple uh, ways, and then we have tried try to, to improve the capacity we, have, we, have, we can send and finally, 
uh, we have mixed it with uh, internet. So uh, the conclusions we have here is like, this is not, we are not exploiting some vulnerability. We are not um, dealing with an error. It's more like about the design. We are using normal features of the network. It's, and we think it's not easy to solve this. Uh, we think um, the ISP should monitor strange behaviors in the, in the use of the network, um, but it can be useful for the first two methods, but in the last one it was only, so one, only one call, so we are not so sure about how to, how to fix that. <laughs> um, well, to finish, uh, uh, we have talked about a mobile phone, uh, this is a free project, and we also want, if you want to collaborate with the project, if you want to help us to improve that and to help with this project, uh, please contact us and, or, made a, or, or, <laughs> or made a pull request in GitHub, uh, because we think it was the, mm, the, the origin of our investigation, but we think it could be also the origin of another ones, and it could also help to, as an educational project for other people and concern about uh, privacy. So, well, guys, uh, thanks for all, and thanks for coming here to, <laughs> to, no to hear about this. Okay, thank you very much. And thank you, uh, Alfonso and George. Some questions? Are there any questions? We have three whistles, so <laughs> this is the best one, so. It's <laughs> okay. Oh, all right. Thanks for the talk, <clears throat> great stuff. Um, so you are like a problem and there is no solution, right? So there is no easy solution. So do, uh, do you plan to bring you know, the problem you are light to a general audience? For example, there is Mobile World Congress, which is like a huge conference on, uh, on mobile. Uh, it might be that you know, these people might listen to you and might come up with some solutions, even if it's not so easy. So are you planning to work with uh, standard organizations or with uh, vendors or telcos to try to address the problem somehow? Uh, well, by now we, have, we haven't planned about that, but well, we are open to, <laughs> to try to, to continue researching about that, but we really don't know because it's something about the protocol and how it, the design of the network, so we will see. <laughs> In fact, it's a normal behavior. So, so yeah. in this, this, this is the what sample examples, and it's only called. So, well, but it's, it's your responsibility to, now that you have presented such a problem <laughs> to try to you know at least talk with the people you think might you know work to find a solution. Okay, well, I can listen. Well, okay. <laughs> yeah, let's talk okay, offline. Let's talk, talk now. Okay. Thank you. Uh, I know that well. You are a part of group uh, BBVA, and uh, well, being like a large company in Spain, and you have a relationship, I guess, with Vodafone or Telefonica. Have you reached with them just to see if they actually care of? monitoring this or they have the capability or anything? We, we in my case, we talk. Yeah. And uh, uh, no, the answer is no. Yes, sir. They, well, they... This guy, a specific guy, yeah. sent me that no. Okay. And it, the problem is not that. The problem is, in some way, you need to block the SIM card. And the problem is when you decide. 10 missed call, 700 maybe is a, a bad behavior, but 10 missed call per day? No, no, yeah. One per day? No, obviously no. Yeah, I, I imagine like, yes. I don't know. So that, that is the problem. Two, two months of trans transmission. Then. Thank you. Ben Coque, es que no, no lo soy. No, ¿Tú lo sabes? ¿Oyes? Hey. Thanks for the talk. And are you planning to add the added method, other methods to your uh, your research? 
because you were just using one method and you presented different methods taken from the specification. So, or am I wrong? Um, well, here we have uh, so only the methods, with, uh, the methods we have implemented for the demo. But we have more methods that it was like, okay, we can talk about them, but we think it's more interesting to show you the, the result of uh, something implemented. And is, do you know what is the capacity of using these other methods to, to transmit data in Convert Channel? Uh, well, uh, there is another two more that is more or less the same capacity because they improve in some things, but they but the performance decreases in another thing. So it's more or less the same capacity in all. The but for example, in the NASS, in the last sample in this, um, I don't remember, but I think it's uh, one thousand bytes. I think, but is is not real because. Here is only 29 bits, but you use a URL, and in the URLs you, you can encode more information. So it depends. With only 2G calls, up to 30, uh, 30 bits per minute is our best result. Okay. But if you use a missed uh, a scenario, uh, a lot of information, a lot. Okay. Thank you very much. Any more questions? No more? Then give it up one more time for George and Alfonso. Thank you very much. Thank you guys.